Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society and I want to talk to you this afternoon about the temporal mandibular joint and what makes it hurt and the different things in the occlusion that can cause this to happen. Let's just uh, forget everything now and if you want to learn something about the the temporal mandibular joint and how to take care of it. And I want to try to help as much as I possibly can. I don't have any idea where you are, who you are, but people all over the world have trouble with their jaw joints up here. And one of the things that causes it is to press the jaw back. If you take your jaw and push it back, or just hold it back like that, it doesn't feel comfortable. And you relax it and let it come forward. And if the jaw closes where it wants to go, they rarely give you any pain or discomfort unless you get hit in the jaw or uh, trauma and things like that or sleep on it the wrong way. But l let's get into this man. What caused him to have such discomfort, he could hardly uh, do his job. And this is a, a brilliant man. He operated the computers for the American Airlines uh, transportation uh, all over the country. And, uh, he must have had a headache with that. And I thought at first it was caused by the tension and uh, just the stressful life that a man must have lived, uh, but it wasn't actually. Looks pretty normal out here. He's got a little bit of a closed bite. In other words, this distance is not quite as much as this distance here, so his, his bite is closed together. So he clenches his teeth and puts some pressure on the teeth like that. And let's get in there that he is under a lot of pain. He comes into the office and what would you do to find out about it? I sat down and talked to the man and said, when does it start or is it just going all the time? And then you go up and palpate. Put your finger right up here in front of the, the guy's ear and just have him open and close his mouth and maybe move it from side to side, and you can feel the condyle as you do that. And you can rub, run your fingers around the condyle. If the pain that this man is having, the condyles and the disc and the fossa will be extremely sore. And I know that for a fact because I've, I've had the problem too. I got the devil knocked out of me skin oh, and uh, it popped my jaw back and it damaged it and it bothers me some but I know how to take care of it and so I don't have any real problem uh, with it but this gentleman comes in with this pain explains it to you and everything and then you reach up and palpate this area in here if he can, uh, has no pain, then open and close the mouth and move the jaw from side to side and you can feel all around that joint as you do this opening. And if there's no pain in that area, then this may be coming from some other area, but most all these cases, it'll be right there, one or the other of the jaw joints. Now, if the disc is off and it's giving a lot of trouble, the jaw will kind of go to the side. In other words, that immediately click and then straighten up like that. Uh, but this is not a click problem, anything else. It's an occlusion problem. The lower teeth bite in underneath the upper teeth. All right. Now we look at his teeth. This is when he came in and started. I mean, this is in 
kind of a cross bite in this area. You got a deep bite all the way across here. And when he closes down like this, it really bothers him. And he has trouble sleeping, everything, and takes so much medication. He can't do his uh, this stressful job he's got as good as he could have. Now, let's go on. I got a bunch of pictures here, but I want you to stick with me now because I feel like every dentist ought to know what causes the big majority of the temporal mandibular joint problems other than trauma. I mean, I get, get sucked in the jaw or had a car accident or something like that. Uh, you can understand that. But just a chronic continuation like this, then it's usually the jaw being pushed back. If you tell the guy to just relax your mouth completely and you look at it, tell him just open and close, but don't touch your teeth. Just, get, just if you touch, don't put any pressure. And, you saw it. and if it's being shoved backwards, the jaw will want to close forward. It'll move forward. You have very few people that have this forward slide like that to have any jaw jaw problem. But when you go back and you go to close all the way, your jaw goes back, then you can be having a problem like that. All right, let's uh, see. This was in 1993. And when I look at his mouth, he's got a pretty good occlusion. You know, it's not that the teeth are meeting all right. The only problem is that the lower teeth are crowded up underneath the upper teeth. This point of this cuspid needs to go down in this gap right here. And this whole bicuspid is crowded out to the lingual. And this, he has ground the teeth off more than anybody I think I've ever seen how they ground the teeth off like that. Let's take a look here now on the other side. It's the same thing. It's got the bicuspid crowded out. The occlusion over here is not quite as good. This tooth is missing there. And this is the fish point right here. This cuspid is more to go here. Now just remember that and I want to show you where this is. Now when we open this guy's bite, in other words, what are we going to do to relieve this? You look at the gentleman's upper teeth and they're made out of porcelain in here and they're kind of like a wet rock and it is ground through this one right there and worn through. And then let's look at the lower ones. That's what it really tells you what's happening in here. And I'm gonna erase that. And now, when I look at his lower teeth, you see this right here? These teeth are ground off from here all the way to the gum, just like chisels. And these teeth are crowded in and they can't get out to where they're supposed to be. And if he goes to somebody that really know what they're, they're doing, I mean, these are terrible crowns here too, then they might say, well, let's extract these teeth. They don't need to be extracted. Really, the teeth will have plenty of room. Now, what happens? the bite is closed down like this. And now his jaw really wants to be out here, but it can't. So he consciously or subconsciously rubs this part together against the upper teeth, which I just uh, showed you just a, a minute ago. In other words, rubbing against this right here cause the wear on the lower teeth. Right. So that 
wears those teeth down. Now let's go to the next one. And you can see where they're worn off. Now when I, you look in the mouth of the man and the teeth look pretty good except there's just a, a deep, deep bite he's got and you see those teeth that are crowded inside like that and they're in, in the way. So what are you going to do to, to relieve this pain? We're going to open this guy's bite. So we set him up to do the uh, the orthodontic work. We know where we want to go. We want to open the bite. And when I open this bite, there's a lot of room in here. We push the, let the teeth come forward. They fit all right. And there's room for these bicuspids to come in. You would think, hey, by George, don't have possibly calf room. But when I raise the upper anterior teeth, they do like this. You see, and you get more torque. They're more straight up and down when they're here. Now, when we uh, raise them up, they'll have torque kind of like that on, in those teeth. Now, let's go on through. Now, when I look at these uh, upper teeth, I mean, this is the porcelain portion, and this stuff is just like a wet rock on teeth. And here's this man's his jaw wants to come forward and he wiggles it and moves it and back here and grinds those teeth off more and more and the more he grinds them off the further they go up and what's happening as the teeth go up there the condyle which is on the, the in the fossa right up here is being shoved backwards in other words the jaw is being forced back and the condyles are up against this retrodiscal tissue and I've talked about that stuff so much that uh, you're bored hearing about it but it's extremely vascular it's got lots of blood vessels and nerves in there it supplies the synovial fluid that is the slickest thing we know about which lubricates the jaw joint. It not only lubricates it, but it carries food material to the tissue in the joint and it takes out the waste material. <coughs> it's kind of like a, a little kidney or something up there in, in your joint. And then your fresh blood comes in there and carrying food material and uh, this thing is a complicated joint. We can't even tell you how complicated the thing would be. I, I wouldn't know the total picture. Now, on the bottom, look at these lower teeth. Now, they rub up against the backs of these upper teeth that are porcelain, and it is just literally ground those teeth off to where they're like they're shaped instead of the tooth being shaped like this you know coming up and coming down here it's ground off like that the whole face of the tooth is ground away in that area and so let's go now just because you haven't studied a lot about this doesn't mean you can't learn about it real easy. If you just really take this video, I'm, I'm an old man and I talk <laughs> funny, but the stuff is here. Keep the jaw to the front. If the jaw is coming forward, it, it doesn't have any pain in that area. So we're here and now I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and now you can move it out here, and when he does, the pain goes away. His job was not so stressful that it was causing the pain, so I was wrong thinking that it was a stressful job that caused it. It's actually the occlusion of the teeth that forces 
his jaw back, which takes the condyle and forces it back into this retrodiscal tissue and irritates the dick inside of it and it gets sore and it is so sore. People come in with a real sore uh, joint and you just go to touch it and they will jump. They won't want you to touch it, but you can very easily touch the jaw joint and you can tell, man, that's it. And you might as well correct that and whatever other pains they may have neck and shoulders and headaches and all kinds of things get so bad they have all that hurts all over the body and doing that especially the shoulders and neck and the headache all right let's go on to the next picture now you see how the teeth are ground off just like chisels i mean this is the back of the tooth comes up comes up right to here and then this is ground off right like the back of the upper teeth, right down so this whole part of the tooth that would be out like this comes in here is ground away and it's just sitting in there like that. So those teeth would have to be crowned when we get through with it, which is no big deal on that. Now looking at them from here, I've never seen any one that's ground off so neatly and this is sharp as heck. I mean, if he can want to bite your finger, he looks like he could bite you, bite it from completely in two if he just closed in on that, the way it's ground away. And that's ground the enamel and the dentin, and the, the nerve canal kind of recedes as this grinds down that canal recedes down with it. Now, here's the appliance that we put in this gentleman's mouth. And I pardon the dogs barking, but I can't stop them, so I'm going to go on with this. This is an intruding arch. In other words, we put a regular arch wire in here, and then we put this wire that goes up like that and down over here. We pull it down and tie it in in this area right there. Uh, I don't know, but let me see if I can go over here and pull. Okay, we've had a little interference here with it. Maybe we'll edit that out. Now, when we start to do this, in other words, we're going to open this bite. We're going to move these teeth up, and we put an intruding arch wire into the tube right here. And we've got a conventional arch wire in here that's doing a whole bunch of things like rotating and lining the teeth up and doing a whole bunch of things. But the intruding wire, you hook, hook it up here and hook it to these teeth, and it'll start raising these teeth up right here and we put one in the bottom and this one has this spring on it and uh, it would be going down like this and bring it up and hook it to these teeth and we this is the most efficient fastest way that I know of to level a bite and it will level it. Now, is the force to push these up makes these teeth go down to some extent. It'll be exactly the same, though. It's just as much this way. It's just as much this way. But the person is biting on the teeth, so that adds to the uh, force on the teeth to intrude them. And then the, these will be down here. The force that pulls these down pushes these up. And if you remember, the face was short in here and we wanted to increase it a little bit. So we just let it raise it up a slight bit. And you will increase the vertical dimension of the face. And what determines that is the amount of 
muscle force you got in here and the amount of chewing force or pressing force that goes out here. But when we go to level this bite, we're out in front of the teeth. In other words, the tooth is sitting like this and we're right out here on the edge of it and we start to go up at just this. It adds torque to it and these teeth need torque and these do too down here. So as you go down, you, these go out this way, these come in this way. And now as you open it, it gives you a great deal of space in here. The jaw can come forward and these teeth don't have to rub against that. The jaw is freed up and the pain went away. Now, it was not stress. In other words, this guy must have some kind of special <laughs> brain, you know, to not have stress with the job that he's doing. Uh, but anyway, this is the way to open it. And I didn't need any splint, any uh, thing at all for treating this. You could have put a splint in there and brought it forward, but he was so close in here, if you brought it forward, it had the, the jaws closing out in front of the teeth like that, you know. So we just went in there and treated it orthodontically. In other words, you can treat a TMJ problem in a lot of cases with nothing but orthodontics. You can do that. And you put them in a splint to make sure that's what was happening. So let me uh, erase this. Now I hope people can understand this wherever you are, whatever country you're in. I'm sorry I don't speak any uh, languages other than that, but maybe you can get somebody to help you, but that'll tell you what to do to the thing. Now we had to put these brackets, these bands on these teeth to get them strong enough. You know, well, let me show you what we had to do, do to them. In just a second here. All right, these are the upper ones. We put a bite plate in there to start with, and he bit on this bite plate. In other words, his lower teeth would fit right in here. And that kept his mouth open. And now we could go in and do something to the lower teeth to help that. So these teeth, if you remember correctly, were wore off down to this point right here. So we put bands around them and the band would be empty this upper portion of this band would be empty. We filled it with a real good composite material. We filled the band up with that and gave the tooth some stability and everything. And this is chewing on that bite plate up above. Now, as we take this down, it's moving these teeth forward at the same time and as they move forward, we're going to carry these with it and we're going to open this space and take this tooth into this gap and open this and bring this one into this gap right there. And there's room for them. And this man's got you know, his wisdom teeth, his second motor, first motor, and these are some real jewel crowns. He does those over again. Later, I don't know where they were done, but uh, <laughs> looked like somebody rolled up some wax and stuck it on the the, uh, the tooth, you know, <laughs> that he ground down and then stuck a pencil eraser in the top of it and, and pulled it off and cr cast it. Oh, that's not <laughs> very nice for me to say that, but he later has some nice crowns made more like this with the occlusion. Uh, fitting in like that. All right. Now the guy's out of pain. And that made a tremendous difference in him. And I sent him, he went back to his regular dentist to see him. And I, he and the dentist and myself that sent him 
were real good friends and he instead he didn't ask me to take these things off he just he had it going and had it right and he took them off and crowned these teeth way before I was ready to do that I would have waited longer but I had the bite open and if you see how much torque is in these teeth there and these are torqued and these teeth right here were down here and now look at them it's got space up above now these really ought to be overcrowded and we ought to come back and reduce the torque in, in the upper centrals and everything which is simple to do is to put the torque in the rectangular wire all right I have to look down to punch these keys uh, so I can't look you in the eyeball but I would like to uh, I enjoyed lecturing and looking at the people as you lecture that's one thing I miss but uh, this is better than than not passing this information on to whoever can use it and whatever you do all right now it's, it's living down and we're kind of going to match up the jaws and we got this out and he comes in after this has been leveled and now he comes back in the office and the bottom arch wires out and he has these teeth are all crowned and comes in and now I have to finish it up by just working with the upper arch lining them up and putting some reverse torque in them and stuff like this but now he's out of pain he hadn't had any pain in a long time and he's doing fine and now that's still in there the, we've got that upper arch intruding arch is still on and it's leveling it out a little more now these teeth on the bottom they've got gold bases and then this is porcelain right here so you'd have porcelain going up against porcelain or whatever it is uh, to grind that away uh, again it would be a hard job to do uh, at the last time I saw him he had not redone the upper uh, crowns but they did need to be redone and we put these teeth where they should be and left a gap in here so this ought to be filled in and that's got a little space in between those teeth which we can squeeze some of that together with a retainer and here he is after we have finished and we've gotten a, some increase in this this lower part of the face in here has increased a little bit and that makes it look better than it did there's the teeth that were ground off like that and here he is now that's a bite plate we put in there and we put a bite I mean a retainer and we put a bite plate on it so his lower teeth fit into this little groove right here and he wears that retainer he can have this done but I left this because I wanted this space to go down into the groove on the upper uh, or lower teeth let me get, get to where we can show you that okay you remember we started off this red dot was out here somewhere now it's right here this was in place this one and this one the thing is gone in place his over jet now and over bite is good in other words he can bite his front teeth together without the back teeth hitting he can chew from side to side and he has no TMJ pain at all and you can do this and every dentist is messing with doing the orthodontics ought to understand and, and just anybody that's working with a patient come in with this type of problem 
you can recognize a lot of it. If you don't want to do anything with it, send it to somebody that will. Don't leave this out. And this is what I cry out. We have so much adult orthodontics that is not being treated. People that are doing orthodontics, many of them don't even want to learn how to do it, don't even want to do it if they knew how to do it. I mean, this is wrong. I mean, everybody that sticks the orthodontic name on their uh, building or whatever you're doing it, ought to know how to deal with how the TMJ and the, and the position of the teeth and the occlusion can affect the jaw joint. And this is one definite way that it can do that. So I hope that whoever you are and you see this or you use it, that you will realize that you have a lot of control over this temporal mandibular joint and if people are having trouble with it, even though you think it's a stress-related thing, go and check out the joints. If the joints are healthy and everything are doing okay, then work at it from that angle. So this is back now the jaw move forward. We have plenty of room for that tooth right there to come in. Didn't mean to mark it out right there. You look at this, now you can feel that or leave it alone like it is. That's a little there too. And these are crowned now. And later on just, I don't have my pictures of those. But he, had, he redid those, well there it is, he redid those lower crown uh, and they look much better and fit much better. I made a lower or a retainer just in case there's any movement in that. And here he is with both of them out, no TMJ pain, his teeth are occluding properly, and he is head of a whole group of people that work in there and he sent some of the people that work there with were having jaw joint problems came in for, for us to work on too. And this is this is the, apparently the end of this 98 but it held up and it's still there and I know the man and he's happy with this and I hope that wherever you are that you can help people with a problem like that. Now that uh, is that is a gratifying thing that you should strive to do. And I enjoy working on people like that. And he is a nice, friendly fellow. And that's him. That's where we started it. And that's where it went to. I don't know what have happened in here. All right, I'm going to quit, and I thank you for listening to this. And not only this, I'll be glad for you to hear it. I want you to learn it, though, and I want you to be able to do this for people who need it. And uh, I'm going to pass this on and quit.